discussing on the the the, the, the stream we we filmed this morning. Uh, you know, I was talking about the fact that there's so much. The market is so much larger now, and it's not just larger in terms of dollar value. If you even look at the types of players that are involved, whether it be institutions or big money players or just basically really experienced traders that have made a living on traditional markets that are now moved into the the, the crypto market space, uh, primarily Bitcoin, uh, you know, the top five sort of uh, more blue chip style, uh, larger coins in, in crypto. But it, t it takes a lot more energy to move the market, not only dollar, but, you know, time and energy and people involved. But one of my one of my curiosities here is because there's no way to really fully fully extrapolate and, and really dive in and figure this out. But all we can do is speculate. But I'm curious y'all's perspective on: is it so much that the market is so much bigger that the monetary energy uh, takes it takes so much more to move it, or do you think that the fact that the market is becoming a lot more diverse and dynamic, you know, having NFTs having such the huge run up that they've had and the, uh, huge popularity shift that they've, you know, the eyes that they've taken and money they've taken. And, th and then separate from that, in, in parallel, then you have gaming, you know, all the uh, play to earn games, Gala and Axie Infinity, and then you have Illudia, and then you have, now you, you're doing Dashly, CryptoVat. I mean, there's, there's innumerable ones that are being developed there, and there's so much money pouring into that. I'm curious your, your thought if you think that might be maybe one of the reasons between that and NFTs and, you know, other DeFi protocols. If, if these things are slowing down uh, the market, uh, the last leg of this bull market, or do you, do you think that that in a way is already, I don't want to say priced in, but sort of built into exponential growth in any market space that this was bound to happen anyway. So it's not really taking away from it. It's going the same, you know, exactly as according to plan. Like what, what, what are your thoughts there? Yeah, I mean, everything, everything is exploding, right? And this is, this is like one of the moments that we all projected and predicted, you know, a decade ago. Um, everything, I mean, I'm walking around the streets of Miami right now, and I'm seeing Bitcoin logos on every corner. Um, you're seeing stadiums renamed as FTX Arena and Crypto.com. Uh, and this is just the beginning. I mean, again, like, you know, people have this, this reverse FOMO or, you know, they, I, the, the conversations I get against crypto now are people thinking they're too late already. And, you know, this is one of those things I keep telling people, like, if you're dollar cost averaging and you're putting in daily, weekly, whatever it is, you are, you're moving the market. Even if it's moving the needle, $10, $50, whatever it is, you know, I've been actively recruiting people to get in the space hand over fist for a, a decade almost. And all of these actions are direct multipliers when you're looking at these leveraged markets. Um, so I actually got to, I got to drop here guys. Uh, my co-founder David will be joining us, um, as NFCG. So Kelly, if you can bring him up here when he jumps on, I got to, uh, I'm jumping on this, uh, four days actual yacht party. So, <laughs> well, dude, right on. Thank you so much. Yeah. For fun with that, man. Us. Yeah. Enjoy. Yeah. Uh, and as soon as I see him hop in here, I'll, I'll, I'll bring him up as well. Uh, because I know we wanted to have him speak uh, a bit as well. But thank you for your time, Brandon. Thank you for Much your Much appreciated, knowledge. Brandon. We'll thank chat again soon. Friendship, homie. For sure, guys. Yeah. Uh, we'll talk soon. Thanks, Kelly. All right, brother. Uh, buy, more, buy more Gala. <laughs> yeah. I agree. Gala is a very good project, and they're doing a lot of stuff that's going to be on the Flare Network or NFTs on the XRP ledger. So I, I, I'm very bullish on Gala. Yeah, I mean, oh, they've, right got, they've got a, you know six-plus games coming out. So they're going to be rolling everything out, and it's just going to be uh, – Again, these are still very early days. They're still selling founders nodes. So yeah, and to, 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 to toot your horn a little bit, Brandon, I remember in our uh, in our the, the the private group that we have, uh, the the crypto group that you know you and I are both a part of. I remember seeing you post, telling everybody, "Hey guys, get in on Gala, get in on Gala." And this was several months ago. Uh, this is you know that's the hardest thing about anybody buying coins. They only want to buy it when it pumps. But the people making money are the ones that see it early on before it, you know, and it sits sideways, sits sideways for two months and you feel like, did I get the right thing? And then just when you forget about it and you stop worrying about it, then it just shoots through the moon. So yeah, good, I think good call I, on that. I think I think to that it's you know, you've heard the term history is written by the winners, but to me it's like history is written by the waiters now. Mm -hmm. I only buy down now. Like if I'm seeing something pump, it's great. I'll I'll refocus and reshift my portfolio, but you know, that's not that's not the time to buy when it's up 300 400 percent expecting 800 percent that's just not realistic these days 
Um, yeah. Time, time, and patience are the best leverage on the market. All right, guys, I'm dropping. Um, David should be joining here. I appreciate you guys, and uh, we'll talk to you. Good one. Hey, Kelly, we can get uh, MC already has a request to come up. We can take a quick question while we wait for um, the other guy to hop on, or if you. Yeah, yeah, of course. Let's get Mr. Matt C up here. He's one of our brothers from the Crypto Jeb community. Oh, yeah. Uh, awesome. I'm going to, let's see, add a speaker. There we go. What's up, Matt? How you doing, brother? It's, uh, it's connecting. There we go. All right, you guys there? Heck yeah. We're here, we're here. Hello, hello. What's up, my friend? Doing well, doing well. Sitting here hey, eating a pork bun, talking crypto, baby. What was that? Just sitting here eating a pork bun, talking crypto. <laughs> well, first of all, I hope everybody had a great Thanksgiving, of course. Um, you know, I just wanted to kind of pick your guys' brain. Uh, the one last place in crypto that I feel like is missing at this point in my investment diversification is I, uh, I'm looking at buying land. Like I, I, I'm pretty well diversified in my crypto holdings. They're pretty broad. Uh, I picked up some NFTs, of course. I was in on the Mojo um, NFT launch last week, which was awesome. The one thing that, and the last thing I probably want to invest in for this bull cycle is get, I, I want to do land. But it seems like you know, the sandbox seems like the obvious place to go, but maybe it, the prices have run so hard. Maybe that's not the best place to go. And I just want to know if you guys had any opinions on what you think that's going to look like in the next, you know, five to 10 years. Yeah, um, I've honestly been thinking the exact same thing. I've talked with a lot of the mods and both Dash League, my own channel, um, other channels from uh, BitBoy Cryptos and, you know, Crypto Jeb's channel. And it, it's we we do we definitely know that the metaverse is gonna have some way shape or form uh, a foundation for what's gonna be the future in NFTs and crypto, right? But we don't know where we're going from here. We don't even know if Sandbox is gonna be the main one. What if uh, you know Zuckerberg's Meta thing actually turns out to be pretty cool and it's like Ready Player One and everybody wants in on it? I honestly don't know, and that is the exact reason why I haven't bought any type of land or anything, only because. Uh, right now, the hype is so real, I think that they're severely overpriced because anybody can yep. create it. Uh, but in the long run, it comes down to is that who's using it and what the fuck can you do on it? If it has utility, like we were saying before, and, you know, everybody and their brother and their mother and fucking even dogs are on there. Well, why wouldn't you be on there if it was cheap, free or cheap and easy and, you know, everybody did it. So I think that's kind of where we're we're pushing towards and you know yeah you could get lucky and in the sandbox uh, or sandbox could have something that's shitty because something new comes out that's better and then now everybody who just spent two million dollars of land in sandbox is kind of like well what the fuck do I do now so I'm kind of hesitant on that aspect I like the things that already have some sort of utility and this just might be the grandpa on me and yeah I'm gonna miss out on a lot of shit because of that um but you know there's other opportunities <laughs> that you know they're more enticing to me right now so of course i keep on the on the lookout you know um bull monkeys salty and all the juggy all the mods give me all these things and we start researching and i, I test them a lot of times i lose money but you know that's why we're testing them because it's, I, I don't want to ever promote anything if it's a piece of shit and i don't take paid promotions right. so if i'm talking about it it's something that i've either gone ape in on my own or i'm gonna die trying to figure out what to do with this. yeah the, the other thing too is like uh when we're talking about picking different projects, whether it be Gala, Axie Infinity, uh, Dash League, uh, any of them, doesn't matter, uh, Sandbox, those are all various pro uh, projects. And then within those projects, then it's like, then you have a whole nother, it's like zooming into a fractal. Then you have a whole nother ecosystem with, within each one. So you don't want to, like, say you have a, say you have a $10,000 uh, amount that you want to invest. You don't put $9,000 of that into Sandbox and have no, no other coin. You know, you'd have something like, I would say, somewhere over 70% at least in larger cap coins, whether it be all in Bitcoin or split between Bitcoin and Ethereum or Bitcoin, Ethereum, Cardano, something where the larger projects that the train's already moving along, there's a lot of stability in that, being that there's so many developers on it, there's a community built around it. And then you put a smaller allocation, not just like where you have the, the other 30% into Sandbox, but... You have some mid cap coins, but then the very smallest allocation you have is, are these very, very, the smaller coins. And this is, it's kind of hard to talk about now because Sandbox has, and, and for a perfect example, 
uh, six months ago was somewhere at the bottom of the crypto coin rankings in terms of their, and they've shot up so fast in terms of their coin market cap and where they, where they rank against other projects. But that being said, d despite that, when you're betting on those different kinds of projects, whether it be Gala, Axie Infinity, Sandbox, I, I would, in, in the way I would organize my portfolio is having a very a much smaller percentage of your portfolio, portfolio in total that's split amongst two or three or four projects that are in that niche. And then similarly, if you're going to buy land in, in the metaverse, sure, buy some land on, on Sandbox, buy some land on several of the other different metaverse plays as well, uh, but don't, don't get over-invested in one because it's like, you know, who would have thought that uh, Yahoo, as popular as they were, weren't going to get completely destroyed by a company that came out years after them, Google, that then that yeah, just took true. over, or Amazon. You know, you know how many people told uh, Jeff Bezos he was a jackass and an idiot, like he was going to do a business store online called Amazon? Well, that bookstore turned into the largest distributor of any goods in the world, and they're, you know, he's one of among the richest people in the world. So you have to split your bets and diversify in that regard. And hope, sure, hope one or two of them make it, but be okay with, you know, two-thirds of those smaller, very speculative plays not making it. But the one that does is will far outweigh the losses you get from the smaller ones, only if your portfolio is diversified, though, and you're not making these bets where, like I said, $10,000, you don't put $3,300 in each one of those, and that's your entire investment portfolio because all three of them very well could be – uh, supplanted and replaced entirely by something with better technology that already has a head start because the roadmap's laid out for them, and they start with bigger money and all of a sudden have something that completely blows those things out of the way, and then now all of a sudden you have real estate investment and, and, and digital a digital uh, metaverse that uh, no, it's a ghost town, you know. So you just want to make sure you pick your plays and buy land similar that similar to the ways you pick like. Uh, uh, portfolio distribution when you're dividing it up, you know, and uh, having a, a, a diversified portfolio, do the same thing with how you're picking land. Picture the land being like a coin or a new project. Have land in several different uh, metaverses. I, that, that's how I would uh, speculate on it. Yeah, you know, that, that totally makes sense. The catch-22 with something like Sandbox at this point, the floor price has gotten so high. So like to say, you know, I, I don't have a ton to invest. I'm looking maybe three to four ETHs worth of, you know, land to buy just to kind of get, you know, dip my toes into it. And it almost eliminates a sandbox if you want to like, you know, diversify, I, you know, um, Cornucopias, I know is another one developing on Cardano and obviously got uh, Decentraland. So it, it almost, you know, there's so much development happening on sandbox, which is awesome. You clearly follow the money, right? But it, the entry point now has gotten a little bit difficult on that project. Yeah, exactly. And, and that's kind of why I'm a little hesitant because like, when you look at, let's say, Cardano and Ethereum, for example, right? We Cardano solved a, a problem because we have only so many transactions can go through a second on Ethereum and we have congestion and really, really high gas prices. We literally are on the bidding war against each other to say, hey, I want this. So now we have to spend $190 and the miners are just getting paid out the ass. So what if Cardano has a, you know, the sandbox ADA version and more people use that because everything is faster and cheaper then and nobody uses sandbox that that becomes a problem if you own land in sandbox right now technically like you're in a location that has a bad high crime rate and that's the sandbox nobody <laughs> wants to live and go to your bar in the sandbox because it's a shithole you live in you live in the hood now right they want to go to the cardano sandbox because you know that's where it, when you think of any nft project just like you said he's going to the board eights yacht club I went to one of the ones in San Diego, and yeah, it was cool as shit. I got to go on a yacht. You got to do all these little things. But all of it is is there's a small group of people who have bought those NFTs, and because they hyped them up so much, their price and their floor price is up to four and five ETH. What the fuck do they do? Nothing at this time. People demand utility. They come up with a reason to own this. But in the end, owning that NFT, people throw it as their profile pic, and they just think, you know, like this is a social status. It's just like me with my watch, right? I wear it to show people, yeah, I have money. 
right? And that is the only reason why people do these things. So if you go to Cardano and everybody's over there bragging and wanting to show off their NFT and it's on that chain, that's where people go back to your following the money. Now, if the money leaves this place, that's the part I worry about with the land and things, you know, and uh, I'm just kind of feeling right. it out. Um, you know, of course, I'll probably get something somewhere at some point. It's just right now. Uh, to me, I'm I'm buying the top. If I go in and I don't like to buy the tops, I buy low and I sell high. That's exactly what I was thinking too. It's gotten so expensive and everybody wants a piece right now. Maybe we wait, you know, you know, I don't know if NFTs and I don't know if land and metaverse world is going to follow the same bear cycle as, you know, regular crypto is, but it just feels like it's really pricey, but yet I also don't want to miss out, you know, it's one of Oh, for sure. You know, like, you never want to miss... An opportunity and every time i miss one that becomes one of my most studied topics and you know people always ask me why i still research hex and why i still look into dead dogecoin that already had its run all this right. blah 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 it's like the reason i look into it is because those are the ones i said wouldn't do it and they did so what did i do wrong i take my mistake and i learn from it and you know i've, I've been studying right. all of these um, as much as i can and like is just absolutely overwhelming how much is out there. I mean, one blockchain does one thing different, promises way more. The tech sounds exactly the same. You know, I'm not a coder. I'm learning. So how the fuck am I supposed to differentiate this stuff? Um, so it's a very tough <laughs> world to, to venture out to. And when, you know, people joke that this is the wild, wild west. Oh, damn right. It's the wild, wild west. You know, I went into a DeFi platform, put $100 in, and four days later, I pulled out $300 in interest. How does that happen? how right it, it, wow. it's simple math awesome. i can show you on paper how it happens and you won't believe me but i can do the math and it's possible because we take out so much friction and that's how much money can be made through simple small transactions just by providing liquidity because people will use the product if it's cheap so right all right well listen i'm going to jump off i, oh, I appreciate great question. you guys so much everything everything you guys provide is so amazing and uh, uh, much Matt, appreciated. I'm still waiting for Nobu, baby. When it when, when are we going to Wednesday, Nobu? When, next time I'm in LA, I haven't been to Cali, and now I who knows when I'm gonna be able to travel next. <laughs> and start doing this bullshit again, so maybe I'll just have to drive know, there. Hey, what are they gonna stop me at the border again? It, it, no, I don't think so. <laughs> All right, fellas, listen. See thank you, you so much for everything. All right. Yeah, peace. thank you for hopping on, Matt. And uh, th uh, you tackled that question perfectly, Matt. I didn't even have to jump in on that one. Uh, oh, either of us could have done it. Yeah, that's good have done it. Anybody, uh, if anybody else has any anything, uh, it, whether it be a topic or a sticking point or something you're just curious about, it, you're free at any point. On the bottom left, there's an area that says request to speak. Uh, and you, if you do that, I'll, uh, I'll bring up uh, anybody if they got a question and uh, we'll chat. But other than, uh, until that happens, we'll just uh, continue talking. Uh, so what, what else, uh, Mr. Vet, what else is going on in the uh, I mean, with your crypto eyes, what, what, what have you been noticing with uh, what's going on with the market right now? And what, what are you speculating? Ever, what I'm speculating? I, I think this is just another cycle of FUD. And, um, you know, I think the lengthening cycle becomes more and more likely every day. When you think about the delays we've had since the cycle, even before the cycle started, when COVID started, we had a huge decline and sell off due to massive fear that, you know, who knows what's going to happen, right? First time we've had a pandemic since, you know, the early 1900s with the, um, what was it, the swine flu? I don't remember, bird flu? Oh, it was a long time ago since I studied that. But when you um, are just looking back at historical data, we all, we plummeted right after COVID and we took about a month, month and a half before we started back up. But then we kind of went back on a normal progression up, started going up in October, November, as expected. And we had our little alt season. Everything was going exactly as planned, just we were about a couple of weeks off. So my guess now would be with the new variant and all this other things, uh, inflation still going up. We're potentially going to um, taper loans much quicker, which is going to increase interest rates, which is going to make it less likely to be able to buy a house or invest. Which you know, So it leads down this awful path on like, how do we get back on our feet? And if that is the case and we keep, you know, pumping money out of our little, our money printer go burr, this is going to extend us out. And eventually the bubble will pop. And when that's going to happen, you don't know, right? But a, a bear market always happens after a bull market. And we've been in a bull market for, well, technically in the Dow Jones since 1896. 
So, you know, we could see a drop that we've never seen before and a huge depression, or we could continue on being the, a very efficient world and figure out solutions. I have no idea where, where we're going next, but I think we're slowly following uh, a similar path. It's just going to take a little longer. And because it takes longer, that's where people's patience gets tested and they sell beforehand. They rush back in to get in because they're like, oh, fuck, what did I do? That's when the parabolic run happens and then the parabolic crash. Well, yeah, you, you know, know what? Uh, Taylor brought up a great point today, uh, T. Shroom, uh, when we were doing the stream. And he's, he, he noticed that there's a certain basically price action pattern that happens every, every year for the last 10 years or so on Bitcoin that immediately following, uh, starting on Thanksgiving through December 2nd, uh, there hasn't been one year where there's been a decline in price over that over that period of time. Three or four of the years, it was uh, like a 10 to 12, 10 to 14 percent rise. The low years was at like a three to four, three to five percent rise. And so the speculation was, you know, it's like in a way we were hoping today, you know, the the the, the ultra bull in us was like, well, today, the end of close, end of business uh, on the, you know, the, the market for Bitcoin today which is 7 p.m. Eastern time in New York, uh, whatever whatever time that is everywhere else in the world, it's whatever zero is uh, UTC, um, uh, that it needed to go up to, I think it was like 50, 58, seven or 58, nine, uh, in order to uh, at least maintain the fact that we were gonna have some sort of positive action between Thanksgiving and now. And so the, the interesting thing, that also in parallel with everybody being mad at plan B for finally being wrong, uh, in a way, I, one, one, I don't think plan B was wrong. And two, I don't think that the December 2nd date is relevant because although historically that has been the case, I do think all these things, it's not like the lengthening cycle is going to go from how it was to all of a sudden the cycles three months longer. It's going to be, you know, every cycle for, you know, it'll, it'll probably slightly go uh, uh, slightly exponential each cycle, whether this cycles two or three weeks longer, next cycle is, uh, a month longer cycle after that's uh, six weeks longer, you know, but that being the case, if you divide that out over four years, if something's three weeks longer, that's only a couple of days, uh, you know, per year that uh, dates that in, historically things have happened on the same date. If a four year cycle is, uh, is two weeks longer then those same dates that something might've happened will be two or three days later or four, maybe even a week later from their original thing. So we might see that uh, plan B, uh, sort of realization of 98k some you know maybe by mid-december and now will everybody that was saying he was so wrong are they gonna go, go back and realize well maybe things aren't as a, you know especially in a market where you're speculating and projecting things out years in advance is it really that wrong or we have to realize these even technical analysis it's not like you're picking the exact moment price uh, direction ever you're saying okay it's speculating here's the statistics and likelihood of where I think it may go here's the timeline I think it might happen on and sometimes the price far undershoots that sometimes it far overshoots it sometimes the uh, it uh, the pattern breaks three days before you expected it would and it catches you off guard some days you know you'll have a, a symmetrical triangle or a bull flag and you're so you're so ready and you keep putting in trades because you think it's breaking out and it's a fake out. You think it's breaking out, it's a fake out. Then it fakes out down. Then it fakes, and then you realize it's when your dip starts dipping. Yeah, <laughs> you, don't, you realize it's not even fake out any longer. You just realize that bull flag isn't even a bull flag anymore. You're just in a sideways trading channel. So you just yep. need to be patient, you know, because uh, things mm -hmm. things things take time to develop and they they evolve over time. And our assumptions about where the market's going and what it's going to do, especially specifically around seasonal items or dates that it's historically happened on. That date may, might not be fixed on a finite calendar. That date might be fixed on a proportional calendar that's relative to the monetary energy that's involved in the market at the time. So our market's larger now, oh, sure. therefore the energy is larger, therefore the time taken to make these things develop or undevelop is also changed. So we just need to be very aware of those sorts of things. You just gotta wait it out. So we got a question, Trail Grinder? You wanna Trail Grinder. Throw gonna bring you right up uh let's see because i know speaker. we have to do a hard stop for you right at eight and uh i actually have yeah to and, about 10 minutes after that anyway so uh yeah we're gonna sure we we get anybody's 20, questions 25, 20 25 minutes and then we'll have to do a i know we're gonna be or if you just want to talk about something just bring it yeah. up hell this is chill I like talking we can do that oh hey, Kelly, shit, thanks Ty. for this space
<laughs> Vet, you're a stud. I hope my uh, my picture can look like yours someday. That's what I'm looking forward to. I'll get out of here. Dude, Photoshop, I'll give you, baby. Give, Photoshop, give, baby. Give, Money buys you, you whatever you want. No, wait, wait, wait. I'll give you the cheat code. You want to know? Everybody thinks it's an NFT. You know what it really is? <laughs> it's embarrassing. It literally is. Uh, if you go into Facebook Messenger, uh, you can create an avatar through there where you basically pick out every feature on your face and then after you do that it auto populates all these crazy different avatars and i saw it and i was like dude this looks just like nft i just took a screenshot of it and i, I uploaded it to my everybody you got a little smirk like on it. your face yeah i like it I, it's just uh, auto populated from facebook or from meta should we say but what you got tell Trail grinder i like your uh your uh bitcoin laser eyes on your bike there we go still oh, i thought that was a laser dick oh, yeah, really, you got I really that right did. It is. It <laughs> Never is. Mind. Sorry about that. Just trying to shine the light on Bitcoin here. So that actually is a good segue to my question. Uh, Bitcoin had an upgrade that they haven't had for what four years with the Taproot upgrade. Wondering if you can talk yeah. about kind of the benefits, the speed, multi-sig, what that did, and why it uh, might be good for the space. Yeah, I'll I'll, uh, I'll give a, a sort of brief synopsis, and then I'll let my. Uh my slightly more techie relatable uh, crypto vet come in here and diagnose us. But essentially the number one thing uh, that's interesting about it is it. I don't want to say that they're trying to compete with Ethereum because it's not that, but there is a huge benefit that's been obviously been made aware of the smart contract uh, uh, functionality within a, a lot of these different layer one solutions and other, other uh, crypto projects and Taproot uh, part of the upgrade enhances the ability for not as in-depth smart contracts as you have on like Ethereum or Solana or these other major smart contract platforms, but it does add the availability for uh, somewhat higher than basic uh, default DeFi stuff and other smart contract ability that you can basically start layering into uh, Bitcoin itself. And then the other thing is they've adjusted the way the Bitcoin transactions are when they're processed, how they're basically how, like you said, the multi-sig, how the how the signatures, the transactions of whether it be sender or receiver or vice versa. So it it basically I don't want to say it cloaks it, but it changes everything from the data will still be there on chain. It's not like the data is also going to be completely private, but it will be in some regards, uh, in some in some levels, slightly at least shrouded or anonymized. So it's not like you're just printing every single transaction with your name on it. Uh, you know, it, it basically how, how it's been in terms of if you could follow somebody's uh, uh, wallet address and you knew who they were, you basically could figure out every transaction they've done. This sort of, this, this clo- cloaks that a bit. Uh, and, and it does speed up the functionality. Uh, but I know that you got a lot more to say about it. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, you're, you're, uh, you're on point. Um the, the main thing that they did was uh, you can now put multiple signatures in one transaction together. So before every transaction and every signature had to be um, reiterated on the blockchain. So you had to confirm it going back. So with Taproot's implementation, um, you can verify all of the transactions on the network um, much faster because the both private and public keys are can now be generated together and then checked against the public chain so that's where you get that little bit of privacy so like say you took about 10 of our addresses together put it into one signature because we did it within the same amount of time close on the network or whoever the aggregator picks it um i didn't look that far into it then the transaction goes across because now in that one transaction, we just brought like 20 or 30 with us, right? So that's a huge scalability that we can now do with blockchain on Bitcoin versus having to switch to a completely other uh, blockchain like Ethereum, where now you have smart contract capabilities and other stuff. But the goal is to make old grandpa Bitcoin a little bit better. So the Taproot upgrade made this single and multi-signature transaction uh, be utilized in one single verification process. And then um, because that was difficult, it made a little bit of extra privacy, which people liked. And uh, then overall, um, hopefully make it to where there's less congestion and cheaper to send transactions back and forth. So that way, Bitcoin could be a currency. I still don't think it's enough to, you know, really become that at this point. But, you know, anything is possible. More people use Bitcoin than anything else. Right. It's still uh, the top dog. So does that kind of answer your question? tie on like taproot and like what it was done because it has been about four years since any type of upgrade has happened and to me it's just kind of disappointing that that's all they did (laughs) 
Yep, yeah, for sure. No, you hit it and then just kind of those, uh, doesn't it kind of unlock the smart contracts as well? They can finally do that a little bit. Yeah, I believe that there was um, something that they could do to allow the smart contracts. And, um, uh, but I still think that at that point, they would still need some sort of layer two, like, you know, the lightning network, because it still would be slow. Because, yeah, this speeds it up, but okay, we went from 15 to 20 minutes to five minutes. Hooray. Right. Awesome. Well, it shrinks. It shrinks to because it shrinks the size of the block too. It's going to exponentially reduce. Uh, you know, a lot, one of the things people don't really consider with all this is the enormous amount of exponential data that becomes created that has to be stored on a block because a block is a number and it's a blockchain. So every every time a block is processed or, or uh, uh, um, confirmed and then transacted and then printed to the blockchain then that also is data that has to be indefinitely stored in, per, in perpetuity uh, forever, right? So yeah. anything that anything they can do as this is growing to make sure that they can shrink the block size and the data involved in, in, in the blocks overall and the transaction processing, uh, it speeds up the chain and over, over time will exponentially yeah. shrink that amount of data that will have to be stored along with it. And with that, I think that was absolutely necessary, uh, like uh, Vet was saying with uh, smart contracts, because Think about it. Think if you're doing a DeFi uh, protocol or some sort of smart contract for a DeFi, whether it be a transaction or uh, whatever it is, doesn't matter. If you have huge, huge delays or discrepancies in times from when something's processed to when it is confirmed and then printed and then full, you know, the full, the full circle there. Uh, whether I mean, think about price action movement or deviations and uh, you know terms of agreement based on things that have changed and. You know, because it's not milliseconds anymore. That's even five minutes is is uh, eternity when you're talking about uh, you know transacting on yeah. uh, whether it be institutions or or industries that are moving you know billions of dollars a second. You know, so it's really important to to shrink that. As I, I can't see how it would really be possible, like you mm -hmm. said, without something like the Lightning Network. Yeah, well, you know, that's uh, with Bitcoin. Bit everybody always thinks of Ethereum as programmable money because they think of smart contracts, but Bitcoin was fully capable of doing smart contracts at launch. It still is. The problem is, was all of the speed and scalability. So what's the point of building a, a smart contract platform on top of Bitcoin if you couldn't even do one little transaction without it costing, you know, $50 and taking an hour? So that was, you know, uh, Vitalik's whole goal and every other developer's goal at the time to make it better. And then there were like a bunch of sliders on a on some sort of mixer, they've been adjusting block size, transaction speed, throughput speed, and they've been sliding these things up and down to figure out which one's the best. And at this point, we still don't even know which one um, is the best. But um, yeah, the, the Taproot implementation, you know, could be huge because with that extra throughput and speed, there might be a good way to use um, smart contracts on Bitcoin. And then with those, use side chains to run back end, just like Polygon, that then kick back to the Bitcoin chain, similar to Lightning Network, but just better. Because I've just never been a fan, and a lot of people tell me I'm stupid for that. That's fine. I mean, I've read all the stuff. There's so many rooms or uh, methods for error and ha like breaching security when it comes to the Lightning Network, and for portals to be shut between, or sorry, channels to be shut in the middle. It says that it can't be done, but there's still errors and where money can be locked in limbo then that whole block gets rejected. So yeah, it doesn't reflect the Bitcoin chain, but you'll have a failure on the Lightning Network. So yeah, uh, I still think it needs a lot of work. But in the end, as long as it stays the, the daddy all crypto, it's going to stay on top. Well, you know, the other thing too is everybody, not everybody, more newcomers than anything, they wonder why Bitcoin uh, can be the top dog that it is when you know, when we start, if, if you look at the surface level discussion that happens, even in this discussion, when we talk about other networks, like whether it be Polygon or, or Solana or Cardano or uh, Eagle or Avalanche or all these different things that basically they came along and they saw issues with Bitcoin, but they think blockchain is such an incredible thing. They developed their own solutions around it and it improved on that model. But the flip side, and you just brought up a great point, that is the reason why Bitcoin is such a valuable asset is although it moves slowly it's kind of like what's what moves faster a ferrari or a tank 
a Ferrari, of course. But which one's more secure? You're not going to break into a tank, but you can break into a Ferrari just by breaking the window, right? So the trade-off is security and the ability with Bitcoin. That's why it changed from being d- discussed as the al- uh, fiat alternative, you know, peer-to-peer cash. It's more what we've realized that it really more is like a digital gold in that, that it is a store of value. And the reason why that's important and, w- and the reason why Bitcoin holds such value in that regard, especially for big money, smart money, uh, institutional money is – because it is secure. But at the same time, now we're seeing all these other things, you know, shiny, flashy things, whether it be XRP or it uh, doesn't matter what the protocol is. Uh, Bitcoin and the developers within that ecosystem and even the users are calling for and hoping that technology can speed up that thing. But, at the, you know, it's got it. I'm kind of glad that it took four years for the upgrade because they need to take as much time as they can because the worst thing that they could do is to create a situation that Bitcoin has yet to have, which is having some sort of portal open or backdoor or something that allows the chain to get hacked or money to be stolen or, you know, just inefficiency in the network that then causes concern. So because that that's their number one asset right now is their security, their safety and their consistency. So it's kind of, you know, the good with the bad there. You just kind of have to weigh your pros, pros and the cons. But that's why it's also good to have multiple different projects. And I store a lot of money in Bitcoin. But when there's when I do certain things, if I'm going to send money to somebody, even if they want Bitcoin or they want this or that, sometimes I won't send it in that currency. I'll send it in some, you know, uh, XLM or something that I actually don't even I don't really uh, invest in XLM. But it's a great it's a great it's one of those great chains to send uh, or XRP. Same thing. Send it. It's immediate, super, super low cost. Uh, and then they can buy whatever currency they want with that. But there are ways you can navigate the, the pros and cons of all the different coins within the ecosystem to all work in the best benefit to you because you know I don't really think you need Bitcoin to run as fast as these other chains. You have the access to utilize them if you want, you know. And as we move further on down the line, there's going to be projects and bridges and things that that create this cross-platform utility to where you know you can send Bitcoin. I haven't seen this yet, but this is just in my head. But you want to send Bitcoin. And it goes through some sort of like price aggregator or something that uh, converts it, sends it on the, the cheaper, uh, faster network, and then converts it back on the other side. You know, there's all it's called RippleNet. Oh, yeah. Is that what it is? It's exactly what RippleNet is. Yeah. <laughs> ODL. <laughs> yeah, I've never, I've, I've never, never, never really dove into the, the Ripple side of it since they got the SEC stuff. But I know, I know there's so, I mean, the, the point is there's just so, there's so many things that are available within the entire crypto ecosystem uh, that are just worth just diving into. And you can't dive into everything, but the number one thing you can do is just remain curious. And if you think like, I just, I, I just had what I thought was a brilliant idea. I felt like a genius. And then you told me it was already available. It was so. a brilliant idea because yeah. you literally solved the problem of the world finance and Nostro Vostro accounts. You solved it right there, man. Now, if only <laughs> you could have coded that about eight years ago, right? you would have been, you would have been dandy. But no, that's another reason why, like uh, XLM and XRP. You know, Jed McCaleb used to was actually one of the creators of XRP. I might have his name mixed up. One of those guys who ended up being XRP moved to XLM, and you know, both of them very, very fast. And uh, I, p- part of the reason why I think Jed McCaleb isn't selling his XRP right now is because he thinks the price is going to go up or the sec lawsuits just got much worse and he can't sell any right now until the lawsuit's over right so there's a good and then there's a really bad route to why he could be doing that because as of right now he still he doesn't get any more from ripple from the release monthly but he's gonna he still has this huge wallet and the wallet's actually called the taco stand which i think is hilarious his xrp wallet but yeah, that's exactly what they're doing like is moving tacos. money around the world and doing it cheaply. <laughs> right on. Uh, does anybody, uh, I think we've got time for one more question. Uh, if anybody has a question or a comment they want to make, and I just want to shout out my dad. My dad's here in the Twitter spaces. Checking what out, up, Kelly dad? Checking out the uh, crypto. We, we like to call him Silky. Silky, what up, Silky? <laughs> uh, good but name. <laughs> But if anybody has a question, hop up. If not, then uh, we'll just kind of shoot the breeze and talk about anything else uh, until we wrap up here in about seven or eight minutes. Uh, but also, I want to reemphasize that one, uh, thank you everybody for showing up. There's quite a few names on here I'm seeing that have been, I think, uh, several of you are on every Twitter spaces we've done. 
Uh, some of you I've seen a number of other times as well. And uh, thank you for coming out and uh, never, never, never hesitate to reach out. And I want you all to know too, there's been several times that uh, a few of you have reached out to me. And just so you know, I am not ignoring. I will notice like a week later that it's in like uh, the, 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 the sub folder of like message requests. I won't even, wouldn't even have noticed it. And then I try to go in there and uh, respond to anybody that, has any any questions or thoughts and uh uh i'm always on the uh the crypto jeb uh, chat in the morning and you can actually be able to catch me i'll be actually hosting the show tomorrow so uh always check us out there and crypto vet he's uh he's got a channel he he used to do a lot more youtubes but uh, i think he's kind of starting to get a little bit more back into it now and he's got a great yeah, discord as well and some videos out this week and uh uh, it doesn't look like my, my day ran out today, but I was going to do a video, but I still will be streaming. So if you guys uh, are on, want to come hang out on Twitch, ask more questions or just watch me play random video games while we watch the markets on the side. Um, it's just twitch.tv slash crypto vet. I'll be on there probably about 15 minutes after we get off here. Um, just cause it's a lot easier when I'm not on my phone and I sound a lot better when I'm coming through a, a real mic with some filters. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's funny. And no dogs uh, barking. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, I, it doesn't look like anybody else has a question, so maybe we'll just end this one a couple minutes early. I really, really appreciate everybody. Uh, Harry, Crypto Vet, thank you always. for always coming on, co-hosting with me. And uh, Brandon's not on here any longer, but I uh, just want to give a shout out to Brandon and what he's doing with Items Dap. Uh, and uh, he's on a every- yacht. He doesn't care about us peasants. He's with some. He's with the board apes, <laughs> having a good time. Uh, But yeah, thank you again, everybody, so much. Have a kick-ass, wonderful night and a wonderful weekend. And we'll be seeing you you on all the different channels. And we'll be checking in with you soon. You guys are legends. Thank you all.